Hi, welcome everybody to Boli Technology Group's webinar series on unique solutions today featuring IPAC AI or Advanced Intelligence. Uh, your presenters today are myself, Scott Gamar, Regional Manager for the Southwest Territory, and Mike Lugo. Mike, you want to introduce yourself? How's everybody doing? Okay. You guys are all familiar with me already. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So a little bit about Bolide. Uh, over 26 years of experience. We're an ISO 9001 uh, certified distributor, and we have a GSA contract schedule. We started in 1993. Uh, primarily making covert cameras for police and private investigators. We've since moved on to full line surveillance solutions. Uh, been doing this a long time. A uh, little funny antidote. Our part numbering scheme actually has a differentiator between color and black and white cameras. We've been doing this for a very long time. Uh, we have offices around the world, uh, Latin America, Europe, Asia, US. So in this webinar, we're going to be talking about what, what is IPAC AI, how does it work? Uh, we're going to show you guys the, uh, the interface of our NVRs and some of the really, really neat things you can do with the cameras, and also some of the markets where it'll be applicable. So IPAC AI, Dynamic Intelligence and Deep Learning Systems. Uh, today, I'm sure a lot of you are here specifically for the facial recognition. Um, the camera line we've added that includes that feature, we have the BN9029 AVAR AI, which on top of all the analytics you get, you get that we'll get into, uh, it really is a nice camera otherwise. 8 megapixel, which is 4K, H.265 compression, built-in PoE, motorized lens, Alarm in and out, audio in and out, SD card, um, really is a great camera. If you want a Vandal Dome, if you want a bullet, we have that as well. This one has a little bit of a longer range IR, which is nice for you know exterior situations, parking lots and those kind of things. Also, a lot of what we're gonna talk about today involves not just the analytic features themselves, but what you can do with those utilizing the alarm relay that's not only built into our NVRs, but also the cameras. Now, I know some of you might be looking at this picture and uh, sweating a little bit at the size of that dongle. Do not worry, we have a back box. Um, you'll see these are the cameras and NVRs available in our IPAC NX series. Uh, you'll see that most of them give you a good number of uh, analytic features from perimeter intrusion to line crossing to stationary object detection. Um, you'll see towards the bottom on the 8 megapixel 4K AI, AI, AI section, I apologize. Uh, those are the ones that also give you face detection, which I'm sure most of you are here to see in action and see the applications involved with that. So, uh, Mike, why don't we like not keep them waiting and just jump into that? Yeah, let's do that. So, those of you who aren't familiar with our new uh, GUI, our new graphic interface, uh, this is it. You see, it's a little different than our usual older stuff, but let's jump right into this. So, going to our setup, we're going to our main menu. And there's a couple places that we want to take a look at. We'll start off with um, under the channel section, intelligent. And you can see here we have a number of um, different analytics you can apply to the cameras. Uh, perimeter intrusion, line crossing, uh, stationary object. This human and vehicle has to do with um, the AI cameras, the face recognition cameras. You can also switch them over to do to recognize um, humans or vehicles. Of course, face detection. And uh, so, really quick, Scott, what's the difference between face detection and face recognition? That's a good question. So, face detection is something that you know your smartphones do. When you go to take a picture of something, you see that little green box appear around the face. That's just the camera saying, "Hey, this is a face." Right? Facial recognition is actually taking that image of their face and matching it to a database. 
Ah, okay. So it, it, there's detecting the face and there's actually recognizing that that face belongs to a specific person. And so this camera does just that recognition. So a little different before you guys may have seen face detection on the cameras before just takes it another step further. I'm just going to go across these really quick. Um, cross counting sound detection. If there's a microphone on the camera and it hears sound, it sends you a, a trigger. Um, occlusion detection. What that is basically if the camera is becomes um, unvisible for whatever reason, if it's tampered with or something's blocking it, it'll give you a, a alarm. Um, and then schedule, real important. Schedule is really important. It's aside from the record schedule, you got to set this schedule as well. Just like when you set your cameras to motion, just enabling the motion isn't enough. You also have to set the motion schedule. For the analytics, just setting them isn't enough. You also have to set the schedule for those analytics. Yep. And then, of course, you can go and you can pull these reports um, of what the analytics are doing, basically metadata and allow you to see with numbers what's going on. So let's go into this face detection really quick. So we have two face recognition cameras set up. And I'm going to go into the first one. And actually, I'd rather do this one. There we go. So um, you see a number of settings on the side. Uh, out of the box, you can just go with it. You don't really have to mess with too many settings outside of the box. You don't want to change too many things. Um, you want to make sure it's in real time. Just real briefly go over these things. Uh, make sure it's capturing the whole screen, detection areas, the whole screen. And that's about it for the detection part. So the other section that we want to go. Now, it's worth noting that you do need to set the face detection. Yes. Yes, very And important. the facial recognition. So you need to set up the face detection so it's detecting those faces. And then what I'm sure Mike will show you next is setting the facial recognition so it can match those. Yep. And it can get confusing because there is two sections that have intelligent. Like I said, the first one's under channel. That's going to set you up um, just getting it ready. But the other very most important part is the intelligent under alarm because these faces being detected will trigger alarms and as most of you are aware if it does get a little convoluted or complicated we're always available to help you can call us we'll walk you right through it yep so as you can see here we have a allow list a block list and a stranger list um and you can set these up on how you want it to detect so do i want you know people on the block list to set an alarm or do i want people on the allow list to set an alarm and you have schedules for both and here's the cool part so the alarm i can set to any channel numerous different um input outputs either the recorder or the camera itself like scott showed earlier i can set timing um to the recording or to how long i want the alarm to go off and you have a bunch of options here send emails ftp all the good stuff our recorders do so so right now let's let's open the uh allow list really quick so you'll see a number of faces that have been added to the allow list including mine uh second from the left uh sg and we've set up that people on the allow list are going to trip the alarm relay um i'm going to demonstrate that for you right now give me just a moment uh mike if you want to exit the menu yep. You'll notice uh, over on the left, there's a little light. And if you pay attention to that light, as soon as the camera recognizes me, it's going to go off. And you can see the on the right side, it recognizes his face, and the alarm got triggered. So it did what it's supposed to do. One second. So there's also a block list. The block list, you would not see that alarm being triggered. It will recognize will recognize the face and put a red circle around it and tell you, you know, however you set that alarm um, to be triggered, you're going to get that notification. And and again, it doesn't have to be a light. It could be um, a mag lock. Maybe you have this camera at your front door, and there's there's hands free entry right there. Somebody walks up camera recognizes them they're allowed to be in the building 
Maglock disengages, the door opens. Yep. Very, um, very, very cool. Maybe uh, it's, you know, uh, a buzzer. Somebody walks up to your front door, you know, it recognizes them, a chime goes off. It do, or maybe it doesn't recognize them and a chime goes off. So now we have these these alarms being triggered, but is that all that it's good for? No, this is really cool. We're gonna show you guys what this face recognition could actually do and in different situations, how you guys can apply them to applications. Well, first, first let's, one of, one of the biggest hassles I hear at least is uh, searching video is very difficult. Um, you know, you have a lot of video to scrub through and you're trying to find when a specific thing happened or when a specific person was there. So let's just let's just try me really quick. We come here and we can go fast compare. And this is every time that I've been on the camera today. We can you know set it for past days as well. And a very cool feature is, I mean, you can double click it right here and it'll take you straight to the video. You can also, preview the videos. Right? Now here's a here's a unique application for maybe like a retail store, right? You want to see it's nice to see every time this person maybe a suspected shoplifter was on camera, but you want to see the exact path that they took. So you could import a uh, a blueprint, a floor plan, if you will, maybe different aisles in a, in a store, right? And what it's going to do is it will play all the times this person was was seen, and over on the map, it'll actually show you from camera to camera the direction that they were traveling from one video to the next. See, it got me traveling from the first room into this room and the arrow changed directions meaning i headed from this room back to the other room now we only have these two cameras set up but of course if you have these on every aisle of a store you'd be able to see the exact path that that person you're trying to review took yeah this is an awesome feature um i don't think that maybe you guys are familiar familiar with emaps this kind of takes it to the next level um yeah yeah previously it was available only on our surveillance client which i'm sure a lot of you are familiar with uh now it's built in to the recorders and again i don't know if i mentioned but all of these features come free there's no licenses there's no added cost you buy the equipment you get these features yeah so i know we didn't uh obviously we have no vehicles in here but i wanted to go over this really quick as well of course um it might have something in the database here, it might not. Let's see, for maybe 24th. Yeah, it might not. Yeah, we didn't really have any vehicles. But so this will basically tell you when a vehicle or a human passed. I know a lot of applications, um, this is really important. And this is exactly what you need to capture those type of um, incidences. Oh, absolutely. Let's say you have it in a parking lot and you have it set up this way. Uh, previously, if you just had it set on motion, right, it would give you a motion trigger every time anybody passed by, a vehicle, a person, a dog, uh, but you're looking for just, you know, a particular person that passed by or just cars or whatever the case may be, you can just narrow it down even that much further. And um, again, scrubbing through video is, is one of the biggest uh, hassles I've heard from people. Um, uh, we have a you have a question here this uh these cameras are omnidirectional 360 or unidirectional things so it's going to so the the question is whether they're unidirectional or omnidirectional um these cameras are around 3.3 millimeters so you're going to get a good you know 90 degrees or so out of them and they will work uh anywhere in that view the optimal distance is eight feet. That's not to say it's not going to work further than that or closer than that. 
But if you were to draw an arc around your field of view in eight feet, that's going to be your optimum range. But um, I know when I walked out there, I stood, you know, in the in the center of the screen. But even off to the side, it would pick me up. Yeah, you can see that some of the pictures on the screen. It's got some side views, and it will pick that up as well. Yeah, you can actually see right here on the screen. There's some profile shots and things like that. Uh, another question here: Do the faces need to be added by capturing from the cameras, or can you upload photos? Yeah, you can upload. That photos. is another yeah. great question. We didn't actually go into how to add people to either list. Yeah. So if now. we if we come back here, we'll go down to setup, alarm intelligent. Now, when you come here, you have an import option, and you can either import from local storage, which is the hard drive of the NVR, or from external storage. External storage would be pictures that you've taken of maybe all your employees and you wanna add them to the allow list. Put them on a USB uh, uh, thumb drive and just upload. Local storage is gonna just give you pages of everybody that it has seen. So let's see if I... So if we wanna go ahead and add Manny here, we would just click them. We'd say okay, and now we can. Well, he was there already, but that's a bad picture. <laughs> we can go ahead and name him. Right? We can, you know, put his gender, his age, any information you want to put about them. And then say import, and you're good. Now, the the detection is only as good as how many points of reference that the the camera has or the NVR rather. So let me exit the menu. Do you see here how the similarity is 96% uh, for that picture of me? 99%, 88%. If we come down here, I'm hoping to get like a really low one. Okay, that is because I've uploaded quite a few pictures of myself to increase the accuracy of that detection. So if we come back here, so if we come back here and we go ahead and edit me, you can see down here that there are quite a few pictures of me added. And what we can do is we can go ahead and add more. So these are some of the pictures from earlier today. So we're gonna go ahead and add all these as well. And what that did is it just added even more pictures of me to increase that success or that uh, its ability to match. Um, if you only have one bad picture of a person, it may not be as accurate. Um, another nice thing is There's another question, how many people you can add to the list? So the list can just go on and on. I mean, it's, it's on the hard drive. You can't fill a terabyte of information, of faces. Yeah, so, we, we've had many more people than this added and we have not reached a maximum. So as for the total number of uh, detections at one time, I think it's around, 20, around 25 at, in one screen at one time it can detect. So you have multiple people on camera yeah. at the same time, it's going to be able to differentiate between those multiple people. Yep. So it's, uh, let's get out of here really quick. Okay. Oh, and it's, it's nice to know that even just here from the right, so somebody pops up on the screen, you can just right click and go straight to, you know, playback or fast compare, and bam, you're going to get everything right there and you got the video you're looking for. Go ahead, Mike, you were saying? Oh, yeah. What about people that aren't on the list? How would I search for them? Well, 
just because they're not, uh, they haven't been added to either an allow list or a block list, it's still going to capture their face and it'll appear, you know, over there on the right. If you have it set, if you have it set up to capture, uh, let's see here. Someone who's not on his database. Uh, Are you on the database? I'm not on the database. I so Mike, myself off. So let me, yeah, let me go. Mike is not on the database. So let's get out of here. So you'll see it's it's capturing Mike. The little light over on the left is not going off because he's not on the allow list. Um, and he will be added here shortly. Okay, so yeah. I'm gonna go add myself. Yeah, so show, uh, go, go up to settings really quick if people are wondering why you didn't pop up on the left. Oh yeah. Um, is we have it set to only capture uh, people. Uh, yeah, that was a good, uh, good thing to show you guys. So all the different um, analytics that you have, you can have pop up on the right. You can see we have them all turned off since we're trying to concentrate on one thing, but if I turn them all on, I would be getting, you know, motion, line crossing, um, um, stationary object, all that on the right side. So for confusion sake, we just had face on there. But apply. So yeah, it was good. Scott brought that up. So we want to add. So well, let's not add you. Let's just search you. So go to uh, search intelligent, and let's just hear some pictures of you here at the bottom. We can do a fast compare. So, and even though he's not added on any list, you still have him. Yeah, but I can still still shows me there on the oops on the uh, screen showing me coming back and forth. So yeah, even though people are not on the list, you can still search them. You can still find them. Um, real easy to search. I, I don't think you could get a much more easier in terms of uh, the advanced technology that we're able to bring you guys. Okay. So does anybody have any questions thus far about this new uh, technology that we're bringing to you guys? Okay. Um, and again, uh, we, we, we touched on some of those applications already. Um, you know, there's the, uh, you know, hands-free entry. There's the, uh, you know, uh, following somebody's path through a retail space, things of that nature. Right? Being able to track somebody's movements like that, very helpful. Again, as, as, I'm, as I said before, um, it's a pain to scrub through multiple hours on multiple channels of video. So anything that kind of helps you find what you're looking for is always helpful. And it's not just about finding video. Because of the alarm triggers, again, you can set up uh, uh, touchless entry. You can set up uh, an alarm. Um, I know a customer that you know installed one of these. Uh, the end user has a long driveway. Right, and they can't see the end of their driveway from their house. So they set up the camera with the line crossing uh, detection so that when a vehicle pulls through using the alarm out on the camera, it sets off a chime in the house. So you're in your house and you hear the chime, oh, somebody's coming down my driveway. Things like this are very useful to the end user. Yeah, and you know, I don't think um, that gets pushed too much. It's a, it's a very valuable tool to have in your bag um, to present to the end user or any application at that using these uh, input outputs. You can automate a lot of things just with the camera or the recorder. You don't need you know, third party um, access control and stuff like that. You're able to do a lot of these things um, straight from the camera or the recorder. It's a very valuable tool.
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I know we've we've spent a lot of time on face detection, but even the uh, the instance I just mentioned, it was just simple line cross detection. Um, any questions? Oh, do we need to buy licenses? No. Again, the, these are all included with the equipment. You buy the equipment, it's yours. And all of these features come with it. Now, if we go back here for a second, you'll see that most of these features, perimeter intrusion, line cross, uh, occlusion detection, come with most of the cameras in our IAPAC NX line with the exception of really just the fixed lens cameras, which are you know your more affordable line. Um, the face detection specifically is only available in our IPAC AI line, um, along with everything else that comes with the perimeter uh, intrusion, the line crossing, stationary object, things of that nature. So we have another question. Do all the cameras have to be AI to do this? So the ones that are detecting um, either faces or humans or vehicles, those ones do have to be AI cameras. Yeah, but all the other, not all, but most of the other cameras have um, some sort of analytics incorporated into it. Yes, yes. Uh, again, almost all the cameras in our IPAC, uh NX line have built-in analytics. Um, the face recognition specifically is only in the two that we highlighted just a little bit ago, your BN9036AI and your BN9029AVAIRAI. This is another question, it says, uh, how, does it, how good does it do in groups of uh, people detecting people? So it does very well. So like I think I mentioned earlier, up to 25 people at once it'll detect. So yeah, in one frame, that's, that's pretty good. These are eight megapixel 4K cameras. So there's a lot of real estate on the screen. There's a lot of pixels to work with. Um, so it definitely has the, the resolution to handle that. So any more questions, anybody? And if you guys, you guys want a more in-depth, um, training you could contact us we'll be more than happy to set something up for you guys oh 100 100 percent 100 percent if you if you have any follow-up questions that come out later you give us a call uh this presentation will be uploaded to youtube uh today or tomorrow today it'll be up there today yeah also if you guys need a copy of that list that has all of our yeah this is a very helpful list um to any of our customers or maybe not customers who want a copy of this we can send that as well yeah so trying to keep it under 30 minutes to not i know everybody's got stuff to do um so so, any more questions yeah uh, the questions have stopped rolling in so it looks like we did a good job keeping it to that 30 minute mark um i want to thank everyone for attending Again, this presentation will be added to YouTube uh, today. Uh, we can send you any information that you need. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. You guys have a wonderful day.